serving as lieutenant governor and traveling the state, going to events, working alongside many of you on my everyday jobs tour, and just listening. It's a disconnect between Montpelier and many Vermonters. While many are struggling, working two or three jobs just to make ends meet, pay the bills and their taxes, too many elected officials think the solution is just to continue to raise more taxes and spend more money or create new programs when we still can't afford what we have. Here's how I see it. The cornerstones of our economic foundation, our small businesses and working Vermonters, are being eroded, and more of them reach the breaking point every day. We all know that no road, no bridge, and no building, <clears throat> certainly no economy, can stand for any length of time with a weakening foundation. We need to get back to the fiscal fundamentals, strengthen our economy, and make Vermont affordable for working families and businesses. If we can do these things, we can make Vermont one of the best states in the nation to live and work, and we can reverse the downward economic and demographic trends of our state. So let me be clear, I'm running for governor to rebuild Vermont's economic foundation. For the last six years, our economy has been growing at about 2% each year. Meanwhile, state spending has been growing at a rate of about 5% each year. Last year alone, the legislature passed a budget that raised over $50 million in new taxes. And still, they face a deficit when they returned to the session two weeks ago. Today, the governor acknowledged taxes are too high, and I agree. But then he scolded the legislature for not raising taxes by another $100 million last year and proposed to raise taxes on health care providers this year. At some point, our leaders must make the same difficult budget choices that Vermonters make every day. As legislators evaluate this new budget proposal, they need to consider the state's present fiscal challenges and the challenges working Vermonters face every day, keeping in mind all the taxes and fees they've raised in previous fiscal years. Six years of new taxes, higher fees, and new programs have made Vermont unaffordable for far too many. Working families cannot sustain these increases year after year. We need to give them a break. Looking ahead, in a Scott administration, we're going to get serious about managing the state financings by getting back to the basics, the fundamentals of budgeting. First, when we budget, we will not spend more than we're taking in. To make Vermont affordable and get our middle class growing again, state government must have the discipline to live within its means, just like families have to. In addition, a Scott administration will stop using one-time money to plug reoccurring budget holes. We also stop borrowing money to pay salaries and fund short-term projects. State government is currently borrowing about $142 a minute. We must be more responsible and more disciplined with our use of bonding. Second, we're going to set clear priorities, make smart investments, and have the courage to make difficult but essential choices. We will prioritize and invest in pro-growth areas like job training, higher education, technical education, road and telecommunications infrastructure. Great teams are the cornerstones of every good business. For an economy to grow, companies need good people, and people need good jobs. I know this from my own experience as a small business owner. My administration will more aggressively market Vermont as a place to live, work, and grow a business. But make no mistake, we must show meaningful progress on the economic fundamentals to make this marketing realistic. Third, we're going to set responsible limits. As I noted a moment ago, our economy has been growing at about 2% each year. In reality, when you factor in rising costs, low and middle in income wages aren't really growing at all. Meanwhile, state spending has been growing faster than both our economy and wages. We can't tax our way out of, out of this. We need to be, be more firm to get back to a stronger economy. Over the near term, specifically during this legislative session, we should not raise taxes or fees. Providing a stable, less costly environment for our working families while growing the economy and lifting wages are the best ways to balance the budget and generate revenue to invest in programs and services. 
That is why, as governor, I will not propose or sign a state budget that grows faster than growth in average wages or underlying economy. To help us better understand the impacts of the state budget on small businesses and working families, I've invited three small business owners to join me tonight to explore these issues in a roundtable discussion. We have Valerie Baudet from Ladder One Grill, Sam Guy from Guy's Farm and Yard, and Gordon Winters from Swanton Lumber. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. I want to thank our guests tonight. And maybe you could we could go around the room and start with Valerie and uh, tell us a little bit about your business and your experience. My name is Valerie Baudet, and <clears throat> I've lived in Central Vermont since 1979. I opened the Ladder One Grill about eight years ago, and I opened the Firehouse Inn two years ago. Um, we just continue, you know, I started my, my restaurant with about 30 seats and we're at about 100 seats now and uh, have just continued to grow and it's a, a very successful um, business and, and very proud to be a business owner in, in Barrie, Vermont. Thank you. Sam. Yes, um, it's, uh, we have a family business. I've been involved in the business since 1977. Uh, my wife works in the business, both of my sons do now, so they'll be the third generation. Um, we have three stores, uh, one in Marsville, one in Montpelier, and one in Williston. Um, we, uh, we're very fortunate. We have a, I'm lucky I can work with my family. It's, it's a lot of fun. Well, great. Awesome. I'm Gordon. I'm Gordon Winters. I own Swanton Lumber Company in Swanton, Vermont. I am a third generation business owner. We have four other Ace Hardware stores in Milton, uh, St. Albans, and Jericho, and also one in Champlain, New York. I live with my wife, Debbie, who also happens to run a small business with her mom, Firetech Sprinkler. So we've been, uh, we've been Vermonters all our life and in business all our life. So we have a wealth of experience around the table, and uh, it's great to have you here and a lot of uh, different perspectives, different geographical areas, and different expertise in different areas. So uh, I'm curious whether uh, any of you happen to listen to the governor's address uh, today and whether you, what you took from that and whether uh, um, you had any concerns or, or maybe uh, uh, agreed with the governor in, in any areas. So maybe start, Valerie, did you uh, get a chance to, to hear any of it? I did. I did listen to it today. Um, you know, one of my greatest fears is just, you know, talking about raising um, the taxes and, and some of the fees and things that um, just as a small business, you know, we can't continue to operate a small business and have the employees we have and grow when we're constantly being taxed, all these new taxes and, and uh, things that he's, he's talking about. So um, th that, that's my concern. Well, we'll get, maybe we'll get into some of that uh, as we move forward. Sure. But Sam, you're probably working today, but I was. <laughs> uh, and I, didn't, I did not listen to his uh, speech. But I guess I have the same fears that you know, they've got to come up with $50 million or whatever that number is. It's probably higher than that now. Um, they're, going to, they're, they're going to raise taxes. I mean, they always do. And, you know, where is it going to come from? A little fee here, fee there, and it, it hurts. It all it seems it, to add up after out. a while. Yeah. That's right. It does. And, Gordon, did you, uh, did you have a chance? I did. I, I got to watch the, the speech and the address today, this afternoon. And I, I think the, the thing that I pulled out that I agreed with the most is the governor said he wouldn't balance this budget or propose not to balance this budget with any one-time funds. And I think every time the state, in, in 2009, uh, Governor Douglas's budget was vetoed, and I think that was the, the, the start to our downfall in the state budgeting. We, we used one-time funds to, to backfill the budget and not control our spending. We, can, we, we raise taxes. We don't have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem, and I think the one-time funds just add on to that as we as we move down the every year and it's gotten worse and worse you know I was uh, I was in the Senate at the time uh, that that budget was vetoed that was in 2009 I believe and uh, the legislature in its wisdom I think uh, it was Senator Shumlin at the time and uh, Speaker Smith decided to override uh, the governor's veto the governor said it was unsustainable it wasn't going to work in the long run and uh, it sure looks like he's right uh, today because it seems every year uh, there's a uh, deficit. Uh, every year it seems like the, the taxes are raised in order to fill the deficit, uh, but the legislature seems to be surprised every single year we come back and there's, there's a problem. So uh, I'm curious about, you know, what, what are the concerns when you, we think about uh, the, a predictable political environment? And I think about 
uh, some of the conversations we've had around single payer, payer. I've been a critical uh, of the governor and some of the dialogue over the last five years, not as much about the subject of uh, single payer, but just how long it went on. And, and I'm curious whether that had any effect on any of you when you think about you know, what that means or what the prospects of a payroll tax are on, on your businesses. And I know that the governor proposed, uh, as I said in my opening remarks, uh, a payroll tax last year. So what, what, uh, what, when you think about that, what does it do uh, to your, uh, your thinking in the future? Well, uh, start it, anywhere. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the, the, the payroll tax, you mentioned the payroll tax again to the, today and, and that it, it wasn't passed last year. And, and I don't know that the businesses had a problem with a, a payroll tax as much as they do not knowing where it's going to go and if it will increase. Because every time you put a tax or a fee or anything, it ends up going to the wrong place or it ends up increasing. And that, that's, I think, what businesses were fearful of last year when he was proposing that. I, I don't think that in our business, per se, we weren't, we weren't necessarily opposed to fixing the Medicare gap. We're just opposed to a tax that may continue and increase over the years and not knowing where it's going to go eventually. Well, and as, as you stated uh, last year, I think to fix Medicaid, uh, the governor proposed a, a uh, tax, a payroll tax uh, to, to take care of that. Uh, but with the single payer uh, provision, there was talk of a 15, 16, 17 oh, percent yeah. payroll tax yeah. then. So all those, you know, uh, all those fees and taxes uh, that uh, people are, are contemplating, uh, I think, uh, I, I don't, again, when you think about expanding and, and investing in capital and so forth, I'm curious how that uh, how that works. You can't as yeah. a small business if you're constantly getting these these penalties and these um, these payroll taxes, like you said, it could be up to 17 percent. Well, when you have 22 employees, you're talking a lot of money, and so you know you, you can't constantly be you know asking the, the the small businesses to make up for you know all these. Um, expenses that have already been been laid out like we, we just can't afford it because then you know again we can't expand we can't um, offer new products get new employees um, you know if anything you have to cut employees and, and cut you know programs and, and things that you have and and I know um, you know you have businesses in different areas uh, I Sam does in particular uh, and Gordon does and and I'm curious uh, too, uh, how geographically, if that makes a difference, uh, you have a business in New York, New York. I think you said uh, as well, and the competitive nature. I know when I talk to uh, particularly those uh, in on the border uh, communities along the Connecticut River in particular, uh, they uh, they are uh, facing this challenge with New Hampshire with with no tax, no sales tax, and uh, but we don't have a clothing tax, and I know that there's one. Uh, in, uh, one uh, company in particular that has uh, voiced his concern. It would, he, he said it would put him out of business if we instituted uh, a clothing tax because he's within spitting distance of New Hampshire. So uh, I, I guess while you don't compete uh, you know, with, with New Hampshire directly, it's, it's got to have some effect. Oh, I think so. And you know, everybody says, well, you can just raise your prices. Well, you can't just raise your prices because you have competitors. And now we're competing with the Internet. You know, and that's, we're not on a level playing field. You know, we, we've got bricks and mortars, we have employees, we have to pay more taxes probably in the state of Vermont, and most states, and it really, it's, it's gonna make it difficult. Every, you know, you just can't swallow it. You can't keep doing it. No, because then they're gonna, like you said, <clears throat> you, you raise your price, they say, well, I can just go over the border and I'm just gonna right. get it a little or they bit can cheaper. Buy it on the internet. Yeah, or on the internet, absolutely. It, it, it makes it tough. And how about uh, the difference in between uh, New York and, and Vermont? Uh, anything uh, that you know, strikes you as being... Well, five years ago, I would have never said it, but uh, New York is more business friendly than what we experience in Vermont. Uh, New York is very pro-growth, very helpful in having you expand. Uh, well, we've certainly seen those ads. And, and the ads. Know, yeah, and the ten ads years prove of it. No, no taxes. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's pretty compelling. So they want business to come. And, and I think <coughs> what you just said about uh, uh, raising tax and, and pushing a business to the limit, it, it's happened in Connecticut, I believe, where uh, GE, GE the, the Connecticut costs. has raised their uh, marginal tax rate to 6%, I think, somewhere in that, that neck of the woods. And GE is picked up and moved to Massachusetts. 
where Massachusetts used to be called Taxachusetts, right. and yeah. now they're moving to a headquarters in Massachusetts. It certainly does have an effect on businesses. They have to look at the bottom line. You know, some of these bigger, uh, larger uh, entities, they have a board of directors they have to answer to, and, and stockholders in some cases, so they have to make the best choices about uh, where where they uh, see fit to open up and continue to do business because they, they have choices, you know. We're, I think we all have, uh, we've become more mobile. Uh, I think our, our, mo our uh, employees have become more mobile, our uh, citizens have become more mobile, and uh, that makes a difference. Uh, they can go, you know, anywhere at this point in time. Do you have, how about uh, workforce? Uh, any, any challenges in that respect? That's <laughs> very tough. <laughs> it's very difficult. Um, it's hard to find dependable help. And the work ethic isn't there like it used to be. I don't, I'm not seeing it anyway. I don't know what, no, what your I experience don't, are. Yeah, I mean, I, I have some, some great staff. I'm very fortunate. Like I said, I have about 22 employees, um, and I do have some great staff. I, I guess I get frustrated with the folks that come in, and they say, yeah, you know, I'd like a job, and, you know, I want to work about 20 hours because if I don't, you know, I could lose my disability or, um, you know, th things like that. It's frustrating um, because, you know, you want them to come. You want someone to come in. You want them to work. You want them to have a good work ethic. And you know, if they already know they're going to have that check, they're kind of like, eh. You know, if I'm not happy here, or whatever, I'm I'm just going to move on. So, I, I don't know. I just there's a, a major disconnect with disability and uh, the uh, earned income credit. And I mean, I, we could really <laughs> get into it here on that. So, but um, yeah, that that's my challenge. Um, I pay. You know, I like to say I, I feel that I pay well. Like. You know, our, our lowest paid employees makes $12, you know, doing dishes, and that's not common, I don't believe, um, for our area. Um, but I keep my staff, and I, I try to keep them happy, and that's why it's hard when there's these payroll taxes and these extra fees and, you know, just the health care, um, the health care fees alone. I mean, because I don't offer health insurance, I'm penalized. Last year, almost $4,000, $3,800. Um, and if I do offer, because I have so many employees, I can't afford that either. It's 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 astronomical. So, you know, there's got to be a balance. They they got to do more for the small business if they want to keep it local and they want to keep people in Vermont and they want to bring people to Vermont. These are some of the, the the changes that have to happen. Well, I think it brings up a good point as well about uh, local businesses buying local. I mean, we all uh, we all adhere to that. We all believe in that as small business owners. That's what our that's our foundation. If we don't Absolutely. have the local. Yep people supporting us and we don't in turn support the local community, we'll have no business. And, and but, but at the same time, uh, I think we need to pay attention to the larger businesses as well. I mean, I know a lot of people have said, well, you know, why do we need the, the big business here? Why don't we just pay attention to just, uh, you know, the mom and pops? Why, what do we should, that's the backbone. We have more of those businesses in Vermont than we do uh, the big businesses. But I've always contended that, you know, we need we need all sizes. Well, you know, and big we, business creates jobs. Yeah, I mean, they I mean, create yeah. jobs, and you know, we, we need it all. I mean, we should just be a big melting pot, the state of, uh, you know. I think we've had some challenges. I grew up in Barrie, and we've had some challenges in Barrie in the past because of the granite industry um, that, that isn't, uh, isn't as large as it once was. And, and we haven't replaced that really with, with anything else uh, of any uh, substance. You've, you're living that up in uh, Franklin County. It's been, been going well uh, with the new businesses coming yeah, in. Yeah, it has been going well in Franklin County. We've been, uh, we've been doing very well in growth of businesses, growth of some population. But I, I, I think that's the whole problem in the state. We're, we're losing population. You know, we're losing population. The elderly are moving out. We're not kids aren't staying in the state, they're, they're leaving. They, they graduate from high school and then they leave. Our colleges are expensive. They leave, they go out of state and that's where they work. Uh, estate tax, you know, the death tax. Yeah. You know, people move out and you, you can't true. say. Uh, I, know th I know we'll hear that people move back, <laughs> everyone that moves out moves back in. There's, but, there's somebody that replaces them. But, but I, can, the, of the same. I have a lot of contractors. I have a lot of friends. They, their address now is Florida. Yeah, and they're still here. I mean, you, yeah. you see them every day, but they're not uh, Vermont residents That's anymore. Right. And they don't pay the taxes uh, in the I same manner. In the last two years, I think I've lost five really good customers that just got sick of it, and they moved to Florida, really? and they're gone. They just, and I mean, they, they were good. I mean, they were wealthy customers, spent a lot of money with every month, and they're gone. 
and I can't, you know, where am I going to get that business back? Yeah, and you have, I mean, your business is unique. Uh, I mean, it's a grain store in the beginning has changed a little bit over the years. You've done done a great job in that respect, but you get a lot of people coming in uh, from from all different walks of life. Right. I mean, what what are they telling? What are their concerns uh, with Vermont, and and what do, what are we doing, or what do they want to see us do? Well. I mean, uh, I think, well, of course, a lot of my friends are business friends, so we all have the same gripes. Right. Uh, but your customers. Yeah, are customers, in. a lot. I mean, I've I got to say the probably the biggest concern is just property taxes. That's yeah. what I hear. Yeah. It, they're just having trouble paying their property taxes or don't know when it's going to end or how much more we can spend, you know, and, and that's, it's scary. I mean, for a lot of people that are on a tight income, it's really tough. Yeah. Well, I think our, <clears throat> I think our education <clears throat> tax is very high. Um, you know, I said I, I own um, four properties and I pay just an education tax alone, um, $16,000, just an education tax. So I just, uh, there's, there's got to be a way to get a handle on that. I don't think just because you own property that you should be the only one paying uh, for education. You know, there's a lot of people that rent apartments. There's young people that rent apartments and um, they don't pay any kind of uh, education tax for their children. Well, it's hidden. Well, you know, uh, that's the problem. Uh, you know, when, when rent, you talk yeah. about the property taxes, the, yeah. like the non-residential rate, which is what, uh. you, what you pay in your business, you pay in your business, you pay in your business, but also uh, some of the apartment houses as well, they pay it. So they pass it on, just like we do with our business. They pass it on. Right, they do. But right. I'm just saying the person that's actually living right. there with the three children right. that is getting paid for everything by the state, <coughs> um, you know, they're not paying anything. And one child in the state of Vermont costs $18,000 to put through school for a year. So I know someone that it's 21, it's going to be on her fourth child, so it's going to cost the state $864,000 to send those four children to school. And this mother pays $150 a month for her her room or her house, her apartment because the state subsidizes the rest and you know she also gets uh, heat assistance food stamps she you know she gets a huge amount of money back from the federal government as well as uh, you know when when she applies for her uh, taxes well, we're we're very generous in this state i think uh, over we wanna, generous yeah we want to really. take care of the folks that are here but we don't want to create a lifestyle for them either but but it is a concern. It's a we, problem. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'm sure you see it in different areas, yeah. particularly there. What I hear from customers mostly is healthcare. You know, healthcare is a is the a, healthcare itself, or or the Vermont Health Connect. Vermont, uh, oh, well, both, or both. But the cost, the rising cost of healthcare. People were were somewhat happy with plans they had previous, and now. They've been forced on the exchange, which has increased their cost over the last three or four years, taken away some very good plans that we had previous. My wife and I were on a HSA that As we, we, were, right? we loved and th thought that was the... Our employees liked it and as well. Our, the employees, yeah, everyone liked it, and now that's gone away. Now we're forced on a silver plan or a gold plan. And I think the uncertainty of rising cost yeah, we try to businesses try to pay what they can <laughs> but the employees if it's going up seven eight percent a year we're not able to kick in that amount of money they're they're left holding a, a, either a large premium increase or a big deductible it's true and now we have uh, you know the carbon tax uh, proposal that 35 legislators have brought forward uh, they uh, have since uh, taken a, a step back so to speak and they've said, uh, well, maybe we won't do it this year. Maybe uh, this is going to be a multi-year conversation. And I've said, that, you know, this has the same smell and feel uh, the, as the single-payer discussion that we had. And, uh, and I, I'm concerned about the, the <coughs> ratcheting uh, effect this will have on our economy, uh, the carbon tax. A lot of people are just focusing on the, the 80 cents a gallon or whatever it is for gasoline, and, and they feel it's low right now. But... My feeling is if, if this is instituted in some way that it will have a, a ratcheting effect on the entire economy and, uh, and uh, everything will be, uh, will be uh, increased as a result of. And so I'm, uh, I'm very concerned about that and I'm very concerned about what that sent, the message it sends to, to people that are either looking to grow their businesses uh, or come to Vermont and uh, to live and and, and work, and as well, uh, those that want to set up a business here. So 
any uh, thoughts on that? Any anybody coming into your your place of businesses talking about the uh, carbon tax at all? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, well, for us, so, you know, we have propane to, to run all of our cooking equipment. You know, the, the firehouse is, you know, uh, you know, heated with oil. And uh, so to have those place, taxes. It's a place, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It is a beautiful place. 8 South Main Street in Bears. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, to have those taxes um, added, you know, and then when, like you said, when uh, gasoline and, and oil go up, those, those percentages are probably still going to be there. So whatever 17% of $2 compared to 17% of $4, like that's just going to double everything and then here we go again. And so what do you do when you, when you, you get an increased cost, you get an extra tax or I whatever it prices. is? You raise prices. And I hate to. I mean, our prices are pretty low as it is, but you don't have a choice. It's just like, you know, you don't have a choice. It, it has to go somewhere because you can only take so much from the pot and then the pot's empty. So then when the pot's empty, what do you do? You either close or you change your strategy. Exactly. Yep. Gordon? The, the car, well, just like we are talking about, you, you, you can't give someone a reason not to move here. If it's, it's going to cost me more if I die in Vermont, it's going to cost me more for my gas in Vermont, it's going to cost me more for health care in Vermont, those things add up and people yeah. say, I'm not going to move to Vermont. And that's why we're one of the four states, I think, that lost population last year. Uh, the carbon tax to us, we, we have eight delivery trucks. Three salesmen's trucks, uh, they're out, hopefully, all day, every day. And if we're paying more on a gallon of diesel fuel, we're passing that on in a delivery fee or in the cost of the good. Somehow we've got to get that gallon of gas. And I've talked a lot about the crisis of affordability that we uh, face right. in Vermont, and that's what I, I think we have. We have stagnant population. We're losing this category from 25 to 45, and that's, you know, the age group. And those are the, the folks that pay taxes, mm -hmm. buy homes, you know, uh, have kids, and we're educating less kids. We, ha we have a systemic problem here that we need to address, and I've tried to, to get the legislature to really focus on the economy because I think... That is the answer. I mean, we, we've got to grow the economy in order for, for us to prosper and grow our way out of the problem we see ourselves in. And, uh, you know, the, the, the bad news is we, we, uh, we have a lot of issues and a lot of challenges. The good news is we're so small in, in population, so we should be so nimble that, that literally the answers are right in our, our, our hands and we should be able to make some changes. So I... Uh, I know we're running out of time here, but I thought I'd ask uh, one more question. Um, if you had the magic wand and you could, uh, you could have the lawmakers or you want to tell the lawmakers what they should be doing in the next two months uh, during this session, because I don't think it's too late. I think we can address some of these issues now. Is there anything that you'd like to tell them, anything you'd like them to work on, anything uh, that uh, comes to mind? Uh, Valerie? Yeah, I'd say, you know, no more new taxes. Forget that carbon tax, you know, shelf it. it I definitely don't think that's a good idea. Um, you know, no more penalty, like these health care penalties that we have to pay. I mean, they just really need to, to look at all these fees and, you know, understand that what they're doing is hurting the small business and it, uh, you know, it's, it stops people from coming to Vermont. So that would definitely be what I would ask them. Sam? I'd like, us, like to see them, their top priority is do the budget. That, that has to be done, in my opinion, before any el anything else can be done. If the budget's done, it may take care of a lot of other problems that they haven't got money to deal with this year. Um, and and it, to me, the ultimate legislative session should be a two-month session. It starts January 15th and ends March 15th. And they send an agenda before they go. So before they adjourn, they set their agenda for next year. And they pick 10 or 15 or 12 items that they know they can address. And if there's any room for anything else, they deal with it raise the pay and get qualified people there. Yeah, I, I do think that's a problem, by the way. I think that if we could shorten the length of the session, uh, I do believe that more people would run right. and more people would get active. But as it is right now, it's I mean, as a business open person, you can't leave your business for yeah. five months or yeah. four months or I Unfortunately, mean, two months, maybe, yeah. but yeah. it's tough. And I, I think they don't need to discuss as much as they do. They could get it done quicker. Gordon. Well, that's a tough question. I could talk for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, a couple of things that come to mind are uncertainty. That's what the business, that's what we need to take away, is the uncertainty that, that we all feel every day. Is there going to be, okay, we can handle this, we can handle what it is now, but we can't handle 
another fee or another tax or something that's that's going to keep adding on and snowballing for us. And I, I think if I could give them one word of advice, no new programs that aren't self-funded. If we can't, if we don't know how it's paying for it, for if it can't be paid for, don't do it this session. Balance the budget, not on one-time funds, but take it. Don't spend more than you take in, and don't create any more new programs until we know it can be paid for. Well, great. Um, I want to thank all three of you for coming in. I want to thank you as well for doing business in Vermont. I know it's not easy at times, uh, but uh, you know we, we have a lot to be proud of, and uh, some of the businesses that you represent are some of the best, I think, uh, small businesses that we have here in the state, and uh, an example of uh, what we can do when we put our, our, our minds uh, together. And, uh, and, and the work ethic uh, that you, all three of you, uh, put into your businesses is something that uh, uh, is envied. So uh, I thank you for coming in. Uh, I th hope the listeners will uh, take, a, a, take a thoughtful uh, look at uh, some of the things that were talked about tonight. Uh, looking ahead, uh, no new taxes, I think is what was said. Uh, no new programs. Get your work done. Prioritize and uh, they're looking for more pro prosperity. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in tonight, and we'll do this again another time. Paid for by Phil Scott for Vermont. Glenn Wright, Treasurer.